Hello guys and welcome to my tutorial on how to make homemade Twix bars today. So you know the classic Twix bar is a biscuit base and a soft, not chewy, not too chewy, but a soft gooey caramel layer and it's normally enrobed in milk chocolate and we're going to do something very similar today except we're going to be making it all ourselves. So we're going to start with our shortbread and for our shortbread we've got a piece of butter here, a piece of butter, cubes of butter here, 155 grams of butter and 65 grams of granulated sugar and then we've got 260 grams of self-raising flour and a pinch of salt in there as well. Okay, so what you're going to do first, you're going to have to cream this butter and the sugar together. So let's put the butter in here. If I can get it all out. There we are. And then your sugar. And it needs to be soft butter as well. We're gonna just slowly mix this. Start very slow at first. And we're just gonna keep doing this until it's light and fluffy. You'll notice that when you cream butter and sugar, when it's light and fluffy, it goes from that yellow, darkish colour that butter normally has, and it goes to a very much more pale yellow, light, fluffy looking colour. Very pastel yellow. We're going to turn it up a bit more. And now we're just going to leave it for a minute or two, just to fully whip it up, and then we'll add our flour. Okay, so I'd say we're there now. I need to remember to crouch again. I'd say we're there now with the butter and the sugar being creamed together. As you can see, have a look inside this bowl. Our butter's got a nice pale yellow colour to it now. It was a bit richer, but now we've creamed it with the sugar for about three minutes. It's got nice light and fluffy, and now we just need to scrape it off the sides of the bowl. So it's all down the bottom, if you can see. Just like that, with a rubber spatula. Scrape it down the sides of the bowl. So now, we're gonna put this back in the mixture, the mixture, back in the mixer, and we're gonna add our 260 grams of flour. In fact, we're gonna do that now. And we're gonna mix it until it's just incorporated. Don't knead it like a dough, just mix it until it's just incorporated. And then we're gonna do that. We're gonna add in our flour. I bet this is quite comical watching me look crouch down. Right, so now you're just going to mix it on a slow pace, not not too much, just a slow pace, just a low speed until it's just incorporated. If you go too fast, the flour is going to go all over the place as well, so be careful. Okay, so our dough is done now. It's fully, the flour is fully incorporated and we're just going to scrape it out now onto our pre-buttered tray. We've put some foil in here and then we sprayed it with some non-stick spray just for obvious reasons, you know. And then we're gonna, we're gonna fill it with our lovely shortbread mixture. Just like this. It doesn't need to be a big ball of dough. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use our hands to spread it, spread the dough across our pan. So obviously I've washed my hands before, that kind of goes about saying. Slowly work it into the corners until you end up with a nice, even, even layer of dough. Really get it in those corners. See how I'm doing it here? Really get it in and make sure it's flat as well, even surface. Because when we come to cut the Twix, we want it to be as even as possible. You know, you don't want one Twix that's got this big lump of biscuit and not much caramel. And then this other Twix has got a tiny little wafer of biscuit and loads of caramel. That's just not what you want from a Twix, is it? So what we're going to do eventually is we're going to take this shortbread base, our first layer of the Twix, we're going to whack it in the oven at 180 degrees for about 18 to 20 minutes or until it's just started to go light golden brown. Okay, so now we're going to be making our caramel, and for this bit I'm going to be switching between, you know, this camera angle where you can see me, and then the camera angle where you can see this pan, because I can't, I haven't got the space in my kitchen to film me and the pan, so this is how we're going to do it. 
We're gonna make our own caramel today because naturally we're already making caramel as a chocolatier. But um, you can just take, you can go and buy caramels in like Tesco's or Asda or any supermarket in your country. And you can melt them down, add a little bit of cream if they're too thick, too hard, and then you'll have the perfect caramel anyway. But I'm already making it. So here I've got 400 grams. I don't want to tip it up so much that it falls out. 400 grams of castor sugar. And then in this jug, I've got 230 grams of cream. And that should give us the ideal texture for this caramel. Not so soft that it's runny and it goes everywhere all over your Twix, but not so chewy that you can't bite through it. It just needs to be soft and gooey. And that's what we're going for. So first things first, I've got a bigger pan out now. I'm gonna whack our sugar into this bigger pan. When you're making a decent amount of caramel, you really want to have as big a heavy base pan as possible. You see, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our hob on to slap bang middle heat. So that's what you want. You want the most medium, the most middle heat possible. Okay guys, our shortbread is ready to come out of the oven now. So, two secs. Right, so here's our shortbread. It's a lovely golden brown. This has actually had just over 18 minutes in the oven at 180 degrees. I'm using a fan oven. If you're not, it's gonna even wanna be at 200 degrees or it's gonna to wanna to be a bit longer. So this is that perfect light golden brown color we're looking for. It's not too dark. And now we're gonna let this cool down. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but the sugar's starting to melt now. We've got quite a bit of sugar in this pan and the bottom part is starting to melt and caramelize. And what we need to do is we need to stir it all up so that this unmelted, uncaramelized sugar can get to the bottom and melt evenly. Because otherwise, if we just left it there, by the time the sugar on top starts to melt, the stuff down the bottom is burned or nearly burnt. So. Okay, so the transformation is nearly there. Pretty much all that sugar is melted and we're nearly at that deep, deep amber color that you really want for a, for a light, you know, for an amazing caramel. Really don't hold back on the color. Some people get a bit scared that they're gonna burn it. And you should be scared if your heat's too high, but if you're on the medium heat like me and you haven't changed it, you'll be fine because it shouldn't get hot enough to burn, but you really want to take it to the deep amber color. And bear in mind, when you're taking it to this color, it is gonna smoke and it is gonna smell like it's burnt. It's not burning, don't worry. It's not burning until it's black, but this is what we're looking for. The sugar's nearly all melted and we're almost ready to add our cream. Okay, so please bear with me whilst we're at portrait for this. It's not really easy to do this with landscape, but our caramel is ready, you know, it's just starting to nearly smoke now. It's right on the burning point, just where we want it. And now we've got our cream here, and we're gonna gradually add this to the caramel. And the reason, the reason you don't add all this to the caramel is because if you do, you're gonna shock the sugar and the sugar's actually gonna set, and you're just gonna end up with one big lump of sugar. They want to take your cream, microwave it so it's room temperature or warm, and then we're just going to gradually add it to the caramel. Okay, so watch this. See how that sizzles? We're going to get a really violent sizzle, like a sugary dragon. That's angry that you just stole this treasure. And then add a bit more once it's all combined. mix it all in and then you add a bit more and a little bit more each time it's going to bubble up and steam because it's so hot that you know some of the water is going to evaporate instantly and finally we add the rest and that should really sort of calm it down now Mix that all in. It's still going to be bubbling. Now, depending on what texture you want from your caramel, if you wanted the softer, more runnier texture, you'd take it off the heat now, like I do, so I'm going to take it off in a sec. But if you wanted the chewier caramel that's going to 
you know, be a bit more stringy and a bit more satisfying to chew. Leave it a bit, well you can add less cream to start off with, but you can leave it a bit so the water cooks out of the caramel, which condenses the fat content of the caramel, which is what adds that chew, because obviously the fat is going to set and cool down when this caramel is cooked. All right guys, so our caramel is done and it's over there waiting for us. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shortbread base here, still in its foil, cool down now, and we're gonna pour our caramel all over the top. So here we have that lovely bubbling caramel, can you see that? Can't really show you any more without tipping it out. Oh, you can hear like a micro sizzle. This is satisfying. I wish I had a camera above me so you could see. Right, so our hot caramel is now in the tray. It's on top of our biscuit base. Just want to make sure it's even. So we're just gonna tip it around the mold. The mold? I do, I do too much chocolate word. I just say mold for everything. This isn't a mold, this is a tray. Right, so that's that. You could either leave that to cool out if you've got loads of time on your hands, or you could go and put it in the fridge. I think I might put mine in the fridge just because I want to get this done. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys when it's cooled down. Okay, so I'm going to add my own little twist to this as well. One thing I like most about caramel is the different complexities and flavour you get when you add a bit of salt. And as much as normal caramel is nice, I think it's a bit bland and it's a bit too sweet and the salt helps to counteract that and really give it a new dimension of flavour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a bit of salt over the top so it sinks into it whilst it sets. So you know, be generous with the salt because this is a very sweet chocolate bar. Like there's sweet chocolate, sweet shortbread, sweet caramel. So you want a decent amount of salt so it can go, you can just go up to the, to the caramel to the twitch and just be like, whoa. Okay guys, welcome back. We've been letting this caramel set for about two hours now in the, in the fridge and it's completely set. You can see it's not, if you can see this, but it's not moving around anywhere or anything like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this out of this tin, like so. Oh, where are we? Yep, yeah, we're going to take it out of the tin. It appears I had a hole. Some of the bits we're going to get out of our shopping board. And put the caramel mixture on here. I'm just going to start taking off the foil. Okay, so all the foil is removed now. We have this lovely slab of shortbread and caramel. And now the next thing on the agenda is to cut it up into Twix, nice Twix sized pieces ready for enveloping. Okay, so we've got our clean knife here ready to cut it up. And we've got our caramel slab just sitting here. And the first thing we need to do, or at least I'm going to do, is I'm going to trim up these edges so they're nice and straight. We don't want to waste much, so we want to be, you know, careful in how much we trim. But I want to trim up just a bit so it looks nice and neat. I mean, look at that. You can already see how good this is going to be. Look at that layer there. I'm going to try a little bit. I mean, I don't know to my own trumpet, but I think that's better than Twix. So our next step now is to cut it into our actual Twix pieces without getting all these crumbs, hopefully, so then we can enrobe it in the chocolate. So as you know, a Twix is quite thin. But I don't know how thin to do it, because when we were trimming it, it was thin and then crumbs happened. But I think, I think that's good. Yeah, so something like that. Nice and thin, straight, or well, probably half that, because that's a bit long. So these are a bit too long for my liking at the moment. I think a Twix is about half this size. So what we're gonna do, straight down the middle, bang. That's more Twixy. Okay guys, so now for the next step. We're nearly there. This isn't quite the last step, 
but it's the most important step because if you get this wrong the entire thing is going to look not very nice to be honest and not very appealing it's still going to taste the same but the whole looks element is just going to go out the window and that is the tempering of the chocolate so in this bowl i have 800 grams of milk chocolate melted to 40 degrees not 45 like they say i'm at mine to 40. we've got 800 grams here 40 degrees and then here we have exactly one quarter of that in tempered chocolate in, in seed form and you're just going to add this to your chocolate like so put the bowl to one side and now you're going to stir this all in this is called the seeding method of tempering it's definitely the most it's definitely the simplest for at home cooks like me and you you know if you've got a big marble slab you might want to do tabling or if you're a pro you'll probably have a tempering machine you need to carry on stirring in this one quarter and you need to stir it all in until all the chocolate is melted and the temperature is below 34 degrees. Now I have this handy little gadget here that is a spatula inside and has a thermometer inside. So I've actually got the temperature right here. And it's telling me it's about 34.9. So we're nearly there. You can see the buttons are starting to get much smaller. Sometimes this can take longer than other times. You just have to keep stirring until it's all melted in basically. What we want to do here is we want to introduce the beta-5 crystals of the cocoa butter in the chocolate. So chocolate has six cocoa butter crystals, cocoa butter has six fat crystals, and they all set at different temperatures, ranging from about 16 degrees up to, I can't remember what it is, 36, 36 degrees. And when they, when they each fat crystal is set, they have different characteristics. You know, like um, one of the lower crystals, when they set, they melt really easy to touch because their melting point is lower, whereas the higher ones don't. And the optimal one for us is crystal five, because that's the one where it doesn't melt straight away in your hands and you can hold it for a bit. It's got the nice snap when you bite into it. It doesn't bloom. That's a key thing. We don't want the bloom to occur here, which is the gray, grey cloudy sort of splodges you're going to get on your chocolate if it's not tempered properly and it just leaves a nice matte finish and if you're using a mould then it leaves a nice shiny finish so chocolate really isn't as scary as it is guys especially tempering this is all it takes to do tempering at home melt three quarters to 40 degrees add in one quarter stir until below or roughly 34 degrees Give or take, doesn't really matter. Okay, so our chocolate is sitting nicely at 34 degrees, still in temper. I would normally temp test it, but I'm, I'm confident that I don't need to because I do so much of it. Pour it in there like that. Don't want to overfill it. Now it's time for the fun to begin. We're going to get our piping bag full of tempered milk chocolate here. And here goes nothing, people. I hope this method works. The only reason I'm doing it and not dipping it is because I don't want biscuity bits in like the majority of my chocolate. Because bear in mind, we're not actually gonna use like hardly any of this chocolate. Most of it is just gonna come off. So enough yipping yappy. Let's try it. Gonna keep piping. You don't even really even have to press, you just have to let it drizzle out. Side to side, top to bottom. Job done. Keep on going. So our chocolate is actually over there, sitting by a window. Oh, just about reaching. Oh actually just over here. You see that? Just sitting by the window. We've opened it, so hopefully, well, I say, yeah, it will set. It's already started to set. Then we'll see if our temper's good, which it looks to be at the moment, but the bloom doesn't happen straight away. So I'm still a bit skeptical. And yeah, and then we're gonna start cleaning it up and decorating it. Okay, here we are now. It's time for my favorite time, decoration time. So I've got a couple of things here. Well, I've got a few things actually. I've got 
Silver Luster Dust, first of all, which is like silver sparkles basically. I've got a toothbrush, I've got a paintbrush, and I've got white coloured cocoa butter, and I've got red coloured cocoa butter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray a bit of the silver luster dust on each on each end. Then further along I'm gonna do a stripe of white and then on top of that a stripe of red and that's gonna make the red stand out a bit more. And then finally I'm gonna take more white with this toothbrush, I'm gonna flick it over the Twix bars. Like there. I missed. There. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. So currently we have our sparkly bits on the end of these Twix bars. Now the next stage is the white stripe. So I'm just going to gently do this. And this is a pre-tempered coloured cocoa butter. So really to make these really simple, you can buy them either online or from specialist shops and things like that. And here we're just going to paint a stripe. Stripe, a stripe, and a stripe. And the way to use them is that you melt them gently in the microwave every 20 seconds or so, just so you don't, you know, take it out of its temper. And if you melt it gently and then shake in between, you're going to have perfectly tempered cocoa butter because this behaves the same way as chocolate does. If you mess up the tempering on this, then you're left with bloom and it sticks to your mould if you're using them. And it's just all round not very nice. So, we've painted our white stripes. It's starting to set already actually. You can see now, we've got our white stripes. Okay, so very quickly, because our it's well, it's well tempered cocoa butter, the white stripe is set. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same, but over that white stripe, so you get a really vibrant red. Because if you didn't use the white stripe, the background of brown and the dark background on dark and milk chocolate especially, you don't need to do this with white chocolate, but with dark and milk, it wouldn't stand out and it would look almost claret rather than the nice vibrant red. You see now? We've got our silver sparkles, the red stripe, and now the final stage is to take some more white cocoa butter. Get your toothbrush. Don't use this toothbrush. Pour it into the bristles like that. And then just pium, 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 pium. flick. Just flick it. Use a finger and flick it all over the chocolate bars. And you're going to get this freckled effect that just looks really, really sleek. Okay guys, so our chocolate homemade Twix bars are done. They're ready, they're all decorated. And now it's time to, you know, open one and possibly even taste one. So here is our homemade Twix bar. Can you guys see that? We've got the silver dust here, our red stripe and our white specks all over it. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Let me see if I can snap it open. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that is what you want from a Twix. Lovely, crunchy shortbread, gooey caramel, and a decent coating of chocolate as well. That's lovely. I mean, damn. Would you look at this? Silvery and red and speckled. I'm pretty damn happy with myself here. Look at that even layer of shortbread and caramel and a nice chunky bit of milk chocolate as well. That is just 